Good afternoon, everyone. We want to thank you to our uh, PRSA chapter webinar series. Uh, my name is Chris Cuban, and I'm the president of the St. Louis chapter of PRSA. We're glad you could join us. I'm happy to announce this is our 16th webinar over the last 16 weeks, and we plan to do this for several more weeks uh, coming up here. So uh, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, welcome. I know there are many non-members of PRSA that are joining us, but uh, we want you to feel welcome to consider joining PRSA as an option to help your, your professional development. Although our board has opted to make these uh, webinars free for members and non-members to kind of show you what we do as uh, uh, PRSA uh, groups around the country. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker for today. It's Kent Lewis, and he's the uh, president and founder of Anvil Media. Um, he has a really long bio. I know he speaks at 30 different uh, sessions a year, different conferences, but we're, we're pleased that he's here. He's won a lot of awards, not to go through them all, but um, I guess he's won the 5,000 fastest growing private companies in America, the 100 best places to work in America, uh, Oregon's most admired companies, the fastest growing private 100 companies, uh, that's the Portland-based uh, business journal there, uh, the Corporate Philanthropy Awards, the uh, Top Pay-Per-Click and SEO Agency in America Award. Um, and he's really a subject matter expert in uh, a lot of different areas. He has a lot of additional roles, but without any further ado, Kent, I'd like to turn it over to you so you can uh, start your presentation. Great, thank you. Can, can you hear me? Absolutely. And you can see my screen. Yep. All right, let's do this. So. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a, I'm a big fan of PRSA, PRSA and uh, I'm glad I can uh, be a part of the St. Louis chapter and the other uh, chapters that have partnered on this event. And today we're gonna talk about effective marketing communication strategies to help you navigate the pandemic, COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, you can follow me on the Twitter at Kent J. Lewis. You can follow my digital marketing agency, Anvil Media, as well on a variety of platforms at Anvil Media. All right, we're off to the races. So um, I, these, are the, these are the visuals I was giving you that are marketing through a crisis webinar, the article I wrote that I'm talk, talking about and talking through right now. But basically, there's a chance for you to become a thought leader, addressing changing behaviors through um, the channels that have now become more uh, popular. So podcasting, video casting, uh, webinars. That's how people are communicating. Zoom, obviously there's a lot of Zoom fatigue, but utilizing Zoom, et cetera. So uh, there are a lot of opportunities to meet your customers and your constituents in the channels that they prefer or unfortunately are stuck with while um, the face-to-face -face is limited at best. So number one, make sure you have a plan that you're timely and you're flexible and you're proactive about it. And then number two, of course, is you want to be compliant. You want to, uh, depending on your political bent on where the CDC's messaging is coming from, um, science versus politics, it's, it's, you want to be minimally compliant with best practices. CDC or in, your, or in your state, in our case, Oregon Health Authority is telling us what we should be doing in Oregon that's different than Southwest Washington, it's different than Idaho or California. Now, a lot of states have tried to band together, have consistent rules. Uh, but the bottom line is you want to make sure your business is CDC and state compliant, that you're following the guidelines to avoid fines and penalties or just looking um, not thoughtful or, or unsafe. And uh, make sure that when you've created those guidelines, you communicate them, you update them, and you follow them, most importantly. Um, training staff, reminding your customers, um, you know, whatever your office or retail space uh, rules are, and that you're, you're doing the best you can to protect your employees and your customers from the spread of, of COVID. Number three is to be authentic. So I've found that this goes without saying, but this is a massive trend that's really come out in the last two years. It is consumers, particularly younger consumers, Gen X, Gen Y, and particularly Gen Z are all about purpose. Uh, so if your brand has not communicated what you're about, your why, Simon Sinek's the why, uh, why do you get up in the morning? Why do you exist? And you're not communicating that and it's not consistent, it's not authentic, then you are losing out on sales. In fact, we're finding that brands, whether you like it or not, whether it's Nike's Just Do It campaign with Colin Kaepernick or it's Patagonia or even go the other side of things with Chick-fil-A or Hobby Lobby on the other side of the spectrum is they're, they're being authentic uh, whether you like it or not 
and that's probably better than not being uh, to being just ingenuous. So the idea is that you will attract your best customers and fire your worst customers. And I'm a big fan of that, regardless of, of your political or religious beliefs, it is being true to who you are. So the, the first step obviously is defining your core purpose, your mission, your vision, your values. Um, they're on our website, for instance, I can tell you what they all are. Um, but the messages we create are consistent with those uh, mission, vision, values, and core purpose. And you, you should be doing the same. This is the right time with so much insanity going on in the world with, uh, with a pandemic and a recession and unrest and so forth is now is the time you need to be crystal clear on who you are. And, you know, be prepared when you do that as you message out for blowback and feedback, but don't lose, don't lose confidence that you're doing the right thing. So on one hand, you got Branson getting attacked uh, in parliament over how he cut staff pay during the coronavirus. And on the other hand, you got Mark Cuban, who was paying his staff at, the, at his professional team, sports teams, and the stadium, even though there was no work to be had, because that's what he believes in. Um, as a, he's one of many billionaires, but he's one that actually seems to be giving back and, and um, paying it forward. And he believes strongly that how companies treat workers during the pandemic will define their brand for decades. And I 100% agree. The brands that take care of their, custom, their, their employees are going to fare far better. I would say if we put a number, th three to five times stronger revenue or profitability in the next five years. And that's based on um, similar research that was done during the 08 um, recession. And um, so one thing I did is I actually wrote an article, how to create content how to create a content strategy based on pure purpose. So the content we create is wholly authentic. It resonates and it's taking more and more chances. I, um, for instance, for, um, for fear of, or uh, no fear of turning off certain people, I believe that racial injustice is a, is a chronic problem in the United States and it is maybe our um, demise. That's a position that, that Anvil is willing to take. We are far more quiet on other political issues. Um, we're not necessarily political. I don't believe um, equality among humans is a is a political issue, uh, but that's just me. So that comes out in in our social feed, in our social media feeds, whereas other issues do not. I may separate my beliefs from the from Anvil's beliefs because that's um, how Anvil was built. So be in, be keeping in mind what what your CEO, your executives are doing and saying. Is that consistent with the brand? And is your marketing just creating a bunch of noise, or is it truly? trying to make a change and make a difference and stand out. So related to that is number four, which is to be human and empathetic. I, you know, there are, um, Amazon has come off many times as seeming tone deaf. Jeff Bezos made 200 billion um, in a very short amount of time. And I don't see him exactly giving it back to his workers. Now, if you work for Amazon, you may have, as an executive, may have a different view than if you're working in the warehouse, um, you know, blood in your fingers working 14 to 20 hour days. So uh, bottom line is you, you look for um, a brands that are empathetic and human during these times and they will fare far better. So, you know, I mentioned Cuban paying his employees throughout the pandemic. Um, Tim Boyle in our backyard at Columbia Sportswear cut his salary to $10,000. Retail employees were receiving regular pay despite not being able to work. So, you know, I think that's good for billionaires to, to be able to do that. And I think everybody can do something similar that's in a position of power has sufficient economic, uh, you know, wherewithal to do that. Um, but be that as it may, the being human and empathetic is very important. So um, I've been preparing a similar deck like this for the senior living, senior care. It's a vertical that we support. And I've been asked to speak at two different conferences in the senior care, senior living space. So I was looking at what Brookdale, one of the largest senior care centers nationwide is doing. And they're doing a brilliant job, surprisingly, honestly, in my mind, of telling amazingly authentic stories about their employees, about their residents, and, and they're doing a great job. And those are the examples that I put in this similar deck. And they're curating those stories. You know, their, their biggest, most responsive Facebook post was a woman, an, uh, an older resident, petting a donkey. They brought a donkey onto the premises for whatever reason. And naturally, it's such an odd thing to see, but it was very cute and sweet. And it got maybe 100x the average engagement because it was so unusual. Um, and I don't believe it was a publicity stunt. They were regularly doing stuff like this at their, as their, um, their you know, care centers and living uh, facilities. So interesting stories. Um, 
Now, the other thing to be thinking about is if you're selling luxury goods, it's it, allegedly the billionaires have bounced back. They've actually made a lot of money in the pandemic. So luxury goods and in the, in the Uber 1% are doing just fine. But everybody that, uh, you know, discretionary income is spending is way down for the rest of the, the 99 percenters. So you as a, as a premium brand, whatever you're selling may look at different pricing models or revising your product lineup or changing payment options to broaden or not lose too much momentum because I, I have full confidence the economy will be going down before it goes up in the next 12 months and you need to be prepared for that. And looking at um, st sharing stories about what you're doing to give back, to get engaged, to helping consumers, uh, to helping people in your community. I think those are all important in the human empathetic side of things. We understand your pain and we're proactively helping you. So I think those are really important stories to be telling through social media and in general through your marketing and communications. Now, number five would be to be of service, to donate or volunteer. So uh, I just alluded to that. So are you providing funding? Are you discounting? Are you creating scholarships? Um, are you actually funding new levels of health support or safety support with equipment or training? Are you donating supplies or cash for supplies? Um, and what are you doing to support your employees' volunteer time? If they want to help out with charities, is that supported? And if it is, are you telling that story? I think it's important, back to the empathy, is that if you're doing these things authentically because that's your brand, then you should be telling those stories authentically. And if you're not, you should consider um, changing up your priorities and doing some of these things, not just because it's good marketing, but because it's good business and it's good citizenry, citizenship. So um, whether it's corporate citizenship or, or just humanity. So you can see, you know, Facebook and Google have all given hundreds of millions of dollars to support their, frankly, their advertisers. Um, and then, you know, Forbes is tracking what billionaires are doing and the, and the steps they're taking in response to coronavirus. So if you're a billionaire, you might be on that list. Uh, keep up with Bill Gates, who's donated 100 million to fight the um, outbreak and has been criticized as perhaps not giving enough. Um, and so it, it's interesting. There is going to be blowback whether you do nothing, something, and people don't like it or not enough of it. So uh, be aware, but I think doing nothing is, is not the best course of action. And authentically doing what feels right to you and what you're able to do as a company is the right thing. And then just talking about it, sharing it in an in a authentic, not beating the drum too loud and creating a press event about it per se, but maybe a press release, maybe not. We know those don't have the effect they used to, um, but at least getting the stories out through social video storytelling. And then there's the idea of just sharing ideas. And this is somewhere between thought leadership and just communication. So you're an expert in your space. So create some shareable content, um, lists, best practices, roundups. It doesn't, the white papers are dead in the B2B world. It's, it's eBooks, it's webinars, right? So you can see um, this chart at the top that was um, created by LinkedIn. Top 10 industries mentioning coronavirus during company updates. Information technology companies are the highest, followed by financial services and then marketing and advertising, hospital and healthcare. It's funny that hospital and healthcare isn't the top one, it's IT. So I think, I don't know if that's related to the tracking. I mentioned we, we created a coronavirus rep, um, live map by the 20th, pulling in data feeds from around the country um, on our blog. Uh, and then we have this, uh, you can see what UNICEF has done. I was just Googling um, certain brands or just general terms about coronavirus information and UNICEF, their content uh, for parents was high, very highly ranking in Google, so it's generating probably a lot of traffic and a lot of goodwill. So you leverage your expertise to create shareable content that's timely. Um, evaluate what's going on, on out in the industry, in the news and, and trends, and maybe create your own research or have a point of view on what's going on in your industry related to the pandemic or separate from the pandemic. Um, create your own research. So um, LinkedIn offer, offers polls. Um, Facebook does as well. Do your own surveys, do your own polls, do your own studies, share that information. It's of high value, especially if it's statistically significant. And then license or partner uh, to create credible industry leading content if you don't have the, the bandwidth. Maybe you have more money or time or more credentials than time. Um, or maybe you have more time and have others that have a greater amplifier than you do. So I'll create the content, you help get it out there. 
um, either way, get that content out through your channel, through your partners, um, and help tell that story. But again, sharing ideas, creating valuable information that can help possibly save lives, but at least make, um, make even people's professional lives that much better. Of course, uh, the research shows that entertaining is, is important right now. People need to laugh. So you can see here uh, on the coronavirus news how humor can ease the stress of COVID-19. People need something positive right now with all the crazy stuff going on. You've got brands like Budweiser, uh, Remy Contro doing these weird virtual clubbing live rooms during coronavirus. So that's on the kind of the random consumer side. And then early on when social distancing became a thing, and I just, you know, I do not like the term social distancing, that that's not technically what it is. It's physical distancing, safe distancing, um, because if we're not socially interacting, even through digital channels, then we're gonna go crazy. And that's what has shown there's a lot of mental illness and, and depression right now. So McDonald's, Audi, and other brands changed up their logos to reiterate the importance of social distancing. And so it's clever, it's interesting, it's memorable. It shows that they're on point and, and timely in their messaging. Um, and then, you know, make sure that you are leveraging your brand and your fans to help create that positive content or share it, other helpful information, but doing it in a more uh, entertaining way. So it's not about necessarily mocking the mask wearing so much as taking advantage of, are you creating masks? Are you branding the masks? Are you giving them away to your customers? You know, create that create that buzz, create that value, but, but you can make it entertaining, um, not just educational. Uh, so keep that in mind. And if you can't create it, you can curate it. So what that means is other people are creating great content. You can just be the, the, the curator of that content, sharing only the best of the best for your industry. I've found that that's, that's um, originally the, the first Twitter follower 15 years ago or whenever it was, 12 years ago, to a million followers that had no original content. He was just a dude that shared, curated, and shared the best of Twitter back when there were very few famous people, very few influencers. He's basically technically the first influencer on Twitter. He was just a really good curator, and that was his value. It wasn't his own point of view that he was adding. It was just, here's the best of the best on Twitter. Um, so that those are all options to create entertaining, not just educational content. And then you can tell stories. Uh, you know, we know, I know from being in the B2B technology PR space and early in my career, that uh, it's all about facts, speeds and feeds. When I was working with um, Tektronix slash Xerox printers, it's all about speeds and feeds. And, you know, really I found that's not true, that uh, B2B uh, buyers are consumers as well, they're human, and they love stories like anybody. Stories is how we carried our culture forward through various generations before the written word, and it still resonates with us as, as humans. So um, creating stories out of the facts um, with uh, fact-laden stories are far more memorable, better recall, they're stickier, they're more persuasive. So the best way to tell stories is through your customer and, and employees telling the stories for you. So you see a lot of the biggest brands, the Walmarts of the world, even Amazon's attempted this, is telling stories through the eyes of the customer or the employee. Um, again, being careful that you don't have the blowback from not being authentic, like an, an Amazon, for instance, has gotten heat for that, or McDonald's, et cetera, major employers that may be not seen as paying enough or giving, uh, providing enough benefits, but most brands don't have that problem. So leverage those employees and customers to tell the stories. I've found two things. One is customers can tell the story better than you, and they're, they love to get behind a video and be famous has been my experience. My client testimonials on video are better than any written word. And I don't even give them any direction, just put a camera up and say, why do you work with Anvil? And then they just go off. And um, so that's an opportunity. Smartphones are all in HD. You don't have to have a big fancy red camera to do the you know, 4K. You just need to capture those moments and get them up on social or through other channels. And then obviously you wanna be thoughtful to gain permission from your customers and employees first, particularly your customers. Um, con, you know, a little one pager release, et cetera, is always smart. Um, and then also, there's some great articles out there about how brands are bringing us together during these times with distance being an issue. Um, some brands are very clever. I got to give a shout out to Walmart, who doesn't get a lot of shout outs. Generally speaking, is when they decided to turn 160 of their parking lots into drive in theaters, uh, I thought was sheer brilliance. They're taking it basically under, if not not utilized space. And creating high value. So it's not that um, 
drive-ins are of high value, it's certainly a lost part of our culture, it's that it's, this, it's one of the safest ways to get together as a community. And now comedians and, um, and musicians are doing the same thing, basically drive-in style entertainment. And, you know, Mar Walmart was, I, I'm guessing it's authentic, but it's certainly brilliant. And um, in fact, I was just at a drive-in last night with a group of entrepreneurs. I'm in this group called EO um, that has chapters all over the U.S. and the world. And we got together at an expo center that does drive-in nights that I wasn't even aware did. And we had our own drive-in night with, you know, access to food and beverages. And we watched Hugo, the Scorsese film, homage to movie making. Great film, but we did a community thing together. We got to stay, you know, we had our masks on. We were out talking to each other, but we got in our cars or sat in front of our cars, safe distance. It was a great time. So that's a great way to keep people, to get that sense of community that's been lost. And, um, and then there's a whole debate on whether brands should be advertising next to pandemic coverage because it's seen as doom and gloom. But it basically, they're saying not only is it a good thing, it can save lives. So if brands have the right message, it can be a very positive thing. So storytelling, very, very important. And then evolve, invent, or help solve the problem. So I've found that, uh, you know, this adapt or die I idea so you've got brands that have stepped up in a big way. Again, a lot of this is from March and early April, is brands that went big. So March 20th, 21st, basically, um, a week or two after the pandemic was allegedly maybe here, maybe not, maybe one death, et cetera, um, this thermometer company instantly started sharing their data to see, um, because it's a Bluetooth wireless enabled thermometer, they could see where temperatures were spiking all over the US and seeing that trending data within that first real week of, hey, this is a problem, and or the second week at the latest. And so the thermometer company got a, got a bunch of press for it, but they were providing value by sharing very valuable data that you know, re was basically safely generated by the consumer just taking their temperature. Um, Dyson, uh, in late March, a week later, James Dyson, the founder of Dyson, you know, known for his vacuums, was like, I'm gonna build a ventilator and he did it in 10 days and he built 15,000 of them for the pandemic fight. Smart, um, useful, high value, great PR, all of the above. Um, even companies like Bauer, the hockey uh, equipment company created face masks. Nike did something similar. They created both um, breathable masks and, and shields. Um, you know, that makes sense if you're a manufacturer to be able to do something like that. And then obviously Google, uh, Trump had promised that Google had a dedicated site for the pandemic. They, um, fell short of that, but they are publishing a ton of coronavirus um, mobility reports based on um, location data on mobile devices, so they can track some of that as well. There's been a lot more of that evolution since uh, late March, early April. Keep in mind, it's April, May, June, July. You know, we're in the fourth, uh, we're going into the fifth month of this pandemic, so there was a lot of time for brands to jump. First come, first mover um, advantage. A lot of these brands made a lot of noise. Now everybody's doing this stuff, so you're not going to get that same level of coverage from a communication standpoint, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. So can you evolve your existing products to meet a need right now? Um, like a couple distilleries in Portland moved to making sanitizer when there was a shortage because um, they couldn't sell their alcohol anyway. Um, do you have infrastructure to help deliver things like PPE or even eventually the vaccine or other resources, brain trust, other raw materials, that are needed for some of these, um, you know, some of these ventilators or masks or whatever it is, or creating a whole new product as Dyson. Uh, well, cr they created a product that was new to them, but a critical part was the ventilator that's saving so many lives. So, what can you do as a brand to get in the fight? Um, so, you know, as a marketing agency, we have evolved our products to address our services to address what clients need, which is a, a digital transformation and e-commerce for small retailers, but we don't have any raw materials. We don't have a brain trust that can create masks. Although some of our employees and their family were stitching and sewing masks, we, we you know, we, best we do is help market these um, key messages or brands that are doing these good things. That's about what we do as an agency, but as a company, maybe you can do more. And then of course, there's the tell the story. So you document it, photos, videos, interviews, tell that story, get it out there. And, uh, you know, just, it's, it's just smart marketing, but it's also a good thing. And then lastly, you know, you have to prepare for the worst and then have hope and optimism that, that this, you know, this will come to an end at some point. It's just a question of when. 
and how are we going to get there? So regardless of whether you think there's um, great leadership coming from Washington or not, um, whether this is going to be licked quickly with a vaccine before the end of the year or not, um, I think it's it would be financially uh, and and um, you know career unwise to assume all of the promises being made are going to be fulfilled. You have to assume that we have another year of this before a virus a vaccine is distributed and and has some sort of measurable impact. So what is your business going to do as the economy continues to suffer, as, as I believe it will? Um, you know, do you have cash stores? How um, you know a, a store of cash? Um, to have a runway? Um, how are you taking care of your employees? How are you helping your clients get through this? Are you changing payment terms? Are you changing up your product and your service mix, et cetera? So we are at Anvil, we're no different than any small business. Uh, we are, or any business, frankly, we're managing our costs aggressively. You know, we're, we've made some major vendor switches to bring our costs down in a variety of different places from IT to other support that we need as a marketing agency. Um, we have doubled down our existing customers and have seen tremendous success in the last six months. We started before the pandemic hit. I decided we are doubling down on our current clients. And we now are looking at the largest client in Bill's history. It came off of a LinkedIn lead, um, somebody I knew but hadn't worked with three years ago, um, turned in from a decent sized client last year to our largest client in our 20 year history by doubling down on the time and investing the time to get to know them and figure out how to help them. We've built the trust. It's an amazing relationship. We're doing that with our other clients as well. So we're still doing our sales efforts, right? I you had a, a sales pitch right before this call, for instance, this webinar, but um, I found my time 80-20 rules best spent on existing employees and clients, 20% on new business and other ventures, and it's done me well as a, as a leader and owner of an agency. Um, now, we, we also know that from historic data from the last three recessions, dating back to the Great Depression, that brands that doubled down in their marketing from Wrigley Spearmint Gum in the recession, in the Great Depression to recessions, those that spent more, um, maintained or increased their ad spend, gained anywhere from a couple points to 20 to 30% market share um, during a down economy where their competitors circled the wagons and cut their costs on ad spend and marketing. Um, so we should learn from 2000 and 2008. And I've found that, that also being dynamic and Flexible, as I said, my first tip is also to be laser focused like a, hedge, uh, like a hedgehog in the good to great model is I still have um, goals that I set in January um, that are a two year goals that I am still laser focused on despite I've taken a little heat off myself that these, these goals are as possible as they were um, pre pandemic versus post, but I, but I still have, I've only lightly revised my quarterly and my, um, my monthly goals, but we still have the same two-year goal and we haven't really changed our, our one-year goal either. So still staying focused on the long game is really important. You just have to change up your short game to, to weather some of this stuff. Um, also measuring what matters. I wrote an article on how to measure the health of a services firm, particularly a, a digital, digital agency. And we have a lot of different metrics we can use, but you gotta measure what matters. You know, what are your leading indicators? What are your today indicators? Lagging indicators aren't as helpful. Um, in this type of environment. And then if you uh, applied for SBA, tr uh, triple P loan, if you got it, if you're making sure that you are prepared to pay it back, if it isn't um, um, you know, forgiven, uh, that you've, you're accruing interest, you're probably aware of being prepared to pay that back. Um, I think it helped a lot of businesses navigate this. Um, so being aware and as an employee, unemployed person, um, get, getting that support was important as well. So prepare for the worst as a business owner, as an employee. Uh, you also want to prepare and do your best work, have a strong relationship with management and your customers or whoever your constituents are, and um, you know, save your cash as well. So those are the 10 Marcom strategies to navigate through the pandemic, being proactive, being compliant, being authentic, being empathetic, being of service, um, sharing ideas, tips, entertaining, not just educating, telling everything in story format to be more memorable and more compelling and evolve an event, invent and help solve the problems that we're facing as consumers, as Americans, as global citizens, preparing for the worst, hoping for the best. So I have a bunch of articles that are hyperlinked here that you can get when you get a copy of this deck. They're also available in the articles section of our website at anvilmedia.com. 
Uh, we also have archived webinars, white papers, ebooks, um, articles, as well as a blog that we've been writing regularly since 2004. So a lot of resources there. And I am absolutely happy to uh, take questions. You can also email me questions or if you're impatient and would just like a copy of the deck sooner than later, that's fine, you can email me. Uh, but otherwise, I'm happy to take questions right now. So Kent, we're also going to put this uh, session up on the uh, PRSA St. Louis uh, YouTube channel. We've been doing this with a lot of our webinars, so people that missed this opportunity to be here today are going to be able to see this down the road. And I think one other item of interest that I'd like to put on your list, um, instead of top 10, maybe it's the top 11 list, is to continue to um, educate yourself and better yourself through personal development through this whole process. You can mm -hmm. read books. Uh, if you're looking to, to make sales or to go out and gain new, new business, a lot of organizations are thriving really in this market. And uh, my company is one, as an example, we actually pivoted to doing mostly video production. And obviously video production is a huge opportunity now when we're winning some pretty big contracts, but I never would have been able to do that if I didn't read and understand how to do sales and get myself out of my comfort zone. So uh, I do encourage you to uh, spend the time to put some effort in yourself and uh, work on that as a marketing technique as well. But Kent, we truly appreciate your time today. Um, I, I know that you're a busy guy running and managing a, a, your own agency as well as a lot of clients. Uh, do you have any last words you'd like to, to say? Um, sure. I would just say I, I like what you said, Chris, about educating yourself. I think there's a lot of information out there and it's hard to, to sift through. And it's a lot for one person to try to digest. But uh, what we do at Anvil, and I think this is, applies to any company of any size, is we have a weekly meeting that's become more important now as we have a, a new, you know, partial back in office schedule is um, we have something called This Week in Marketing, and we actually talk through in a big picture meeting, like what's going on in the industry. And we share what we think are the highlights of the week in terms of news and trends. And then we send out a weekly newsletter just to our clients about what we think the most top five to 10 trends are, or um, you know, new ideas or critical thinking. So I think doing that as an individual is important. Doing it as a company or as a team can not only cover a lot more ground and help synthesize a lot more information, but it's really good team building. So I think during the pandemic, one thing we've done is we've increased the amount of virtual. We have every other day we have a, a get together as a team, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and it goes from operational to big picture. And then on Friday, it's Friday at four happy hour. And so it's been a great way. I feel more engaged with my team now than when we were in the office, because I think you take it for granted when you're physically around people, you just assume you're going to spend time together, but we've been maximizing that time. So that would be my, um, it's kind of related to another presentation or topic, but the idea of, um, using technology to keep people together, to brainstorm. You should, as a manager, as an employee, be more engaged or have the opportunity to be if you have the right processes and tools in place. So we hope you join us on future uh, webinars. And uh, thank you again today for joining us. Today was uh, great. So thanks again, Kent. We encourage people to get in touch with you if they uh, have a few, uh, future questions. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. See you later.